we meet just after the midweek charts have been out and you are heading to number one with the album Who Built the Moon. How much do things like that still matter to you? Um, well, I guess it's nice. It's better than being number two, right? It strikes me as a, a very joyful album. Mm. What's going on? I guess I was on a voyage of discovery where I hadn't written any of the songs before I went in. Be careful what you wish for on the album. It's a song about you giving advice to your children. So you've got three kids. What's the hardest part of parenting? The hardest part for me is to be a responsible parent. I know I'm eating chalk ice and chips for breakfast. My daughter, who's 17, is actually, she's brilliant. She's very, very cool. She's not in any way, she's not a problem yet. She did get tattoos without saying anything, which was, I was a bit disappointed in that. What were they off? It was all right, because one of them was my face, so it was fine. <laughs> no, it was, uh, one, uh, they were the brother's initials on her hands, which is kind of a bit of a snidey way of getting it through the back door. I've got these tattoos and I was like, but what? And then she showed me, I was like, oh, it's cute, isn't it? Um, but no more. Maybe. The timing of the album has been interesting, coming one month after your brother's. What was your reaction when his album went to number one? Did you send him a message of congratulations? I did indeed, yes. Did you? Yes, I did. No, I didn't, no. <laughs> uh, no, I didn't, no. No, why would I? We've got the interesting one next month. Voting will open for the Brit Awards. I am thinking best male is going to be Liam and no. Well, they wish, yeah. I'm afraid Ed Sheeran is still the bookie's favourite to win. The Ginger Fury, yeah. Good lad. I like Ed. Not too keen on his music, but I do like him, though. He headlined Glastonbury last year. And he did, you, he? you went to Glastonbury, didn't you? I go every year, mm. yeah. Uh, one of the, the strange things at Glastonbury this year, one of the biggest crowds in front of the main stage was for Jeremy Corbyn. There's no place for politicians. I'm afraid that scruffy old donkey from the Labour Party is trying to go up there and curry favour with the kids. I was the one person booing him, as a matter of fact. You're not a fan of his? I'm not a fan of the Labour Party at the moment. They, uh, they've got no new ideas. And the other lot are just, they're psychedelic in their detachment from people. Do you know what I mean? They're kind of laughable. So there isn't anybody. One of the big news events of the year was of course the Manchester bomb. It was dreadful. It made me feel so angry and continues to make me feel so angry. But I guess because it's so close to home and it's your hometown and it's music fans and you played that arena, it was, it was brutal. How did it feel for Don't Look Back in Anger to become such a song of solidarity? At the time, you know, politicians' words were meaningless, religious leaders' words were meaningless. That one girl decided she sang that song and the people rallied around that song. And as a songwriter, not even the fact that it's my song, if it was a song, it would have reaffirmed my belief in the power of music and what it means to people. You turned 50 this year. How are you finding that? If my 50s are half as good as my 40s, professionally and privately, then I'm going to be doing all right, you know. Is your body telling you you're 50? No, 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 I look all right. As long as this is here, no offence, but, you know, as long as, <laughs> long, as, long as this is thriving, which it is, if you can get a close-up of that. That is, that is thorough. Yeah. How would you feel if you went bald? Um, I would, I don't know what I'd do. I'd definitely retire from music, for sure. You know, but nobody wants to see a bald Mick Jagger, do they?